Today is Easter. And I hope everybody's having a happy Easter. Today, I call this day a big carve day. I need this big coffee mug when I'm having a big carve day. Here's a shout out for Evil Evil Rick. Big carve day, Evil Rick. So, in one of my recent um, live chat groups, I was challenged <clears throat> by somebody to carve a lady wood spirit. Well, here's a piece of wood. This is, you guys, you don't get any older cedar than this. The grain is so tight. Look how tight that grain is. Piece of grass there. This is from a burl. A big old cedar burl I got from Vancouver. I got it from Buddy. I paid 50 bucks. It was a big burl, guys. Look at the size of my hand on this. And then he sliced it up for me. So, I know you all want to see me carve a wood spirit, lady wood spirit, like my normal wood spirits. But I don't have to. There was no deal saying that I had to do it. So I'm going to turn this piece of wood into a lady wood spirit. Now let me take it outside, cut it up with my chainsaw, and we'll see what we got. Okay, so this is what I got so far. I just cut it out with my little bandsaw. You guys can see the grain here. Like, look how tight that grain is, guys. Don, you really don't get much tighter than that in cedar. Look how tight it gets here. So this has some... This is going to be a challenge. And since it was my <clears throat> good friend that uh, threw out this challenge, piece is going to be an honor to him. And there's there's going to be some negative, I can guarantee there's going to be some negative spaces in this. I'm not going to do these flowers. I just thought the flowers would, if this doesn't really turn out to be look like a lady's face, the flowers would let you know it's a lady's face, right? Kind of, I guess. This is kind of abstract. I don't even know if I'm going to put her eye and lip, like a little lip thing there, in the in the final carving. I did one of these before. This uh, cedar, what is it? It's like an inch and a half thick. I got some stuff outside. Same burl. That's two inches thick. But there's lots of this punkiness that goes through this wood. So there's a crack here too. So I don't know. I'm just going to have to carve. But guaranteed there's going to be some negative spaces in here like... Where these lines are hollow in here, I'll just have to figure it out and hope it turns out. That's all you can do. This is a big carving to do at my little shop here, guys. So, like, yeah, it is. So, what I, the main, my main focus on this piece, I'll tell you right now, because any any wood carvers know a lady's face is very hard to do to not make it look like a mangled, deformed, like uh, you know, just a deformed witch or something or troll. So my main focus is to keep the, these lines the way they are. I know her nose is a little bit big, but just to keep them the way they are. So I don't want to, I just want to cut <clears throat> on the outside of these lines right now. Okay. Make her face, because I got to make this part deeper, then her face deeper. Then I got to make this part deeper too, right? So one layer, two layer, three layers for this part, right? So I got this, uh, these are discontinued, they don't make them anymore, but I got this Dremel Trio. I'm just going to use it like a little router. I'm going to pay a lot of attention. You know what you guys... I'm going to pay a lot of attention to on the outside of these lines, and I'm going to take my time. I don't think I'll be able to film it, but I'll get that done, and uh, I'll be back. Oh, and today, carving this beauty, this beautiful, beautiful lady... I'll be listening to old school Black Sabbath Ozzy Osbourne. Absolutely. Okay, you can see here I got my lines cut in, okay? So the outside of the face is deeper than these lines these lines in here aren't as deep as the outside of the face because I need to get that deep in there. So, so this will be farthest away. This will be second and this will be the highest. So far, middle, highest. Three layers, guys. So all these other lines I can carve with my uh, little cut saw 
one eighth. I'm running a Dremel 4300, guys. Flex shaft today, guys. Dremel 4300. This is a one eighth cut saw extreme flame burr, and I'll be carving these lines with deep inside here with these, and I'll be pulling out my Merlin today, and I'll possibly be pulling out my uh, Fordham, and be using the big quarter inch burrs, guys. This is a cut saw extreme flame too. If you want to get to the cut saw site, go to the description below to the cut saw site, use the code CFUSION to save yourself 5%. I suggest if you're a beginning wood carver, get yourself a flame shaped burr. These are multi-purpose burrs and uh, shout out to Just Carve Rob. He loves the flame shaped burrs too. He's got a YouTube channel, Just Carve Rob. Go check it out if you want. And oh yeah, Karen, carve a little. This is for Karen Anderson too. She's a subscriber. I think I spelt you out, said your last name right. Carve a spirit. A spirit girl, Jordy. Well, here you go, Karen. Here's a shout out for you too. Damn you, Karen. And damn you. <clears throat> so while I stay on track for this carving, what I'm going to do now is shave on the outside of this face. Take all this down here. And it will make the face pop. Okay, and then I'm going to carve. So take the, take all this down to as low as I got those cuts. And don't touch the face with my cutter. And I'll take this down too. So you'll see this farther back than this, than the hair the highest. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. This is kind of like an earring or something. I don't know. She kind of looks like a native lady in the wind, right? Whatever. sawdust in there okay so see there's layering the back farthest the face then the hair so now you can almost kind of see where I'm going with this that's about um, I'd say that's a good 45 minutes of me carving guys I pulled out my Fordham I did all around the face with my Dremel, so I didn't touch this face, right? See how that kind of looks like an earring now a bit? I'll, I don't know, whatever. So here, I've been fighting some rot. I had it here too, so look how deep I've carved in there. Okay, you can see the rot right there. There's still a little bit left down here, and it's getting pretty thin there. So I might even just cut this right out and put some negative space in there. And this, see, that's that's what you call punky wood. This goes right through the bottom. Okay, so you know when you're carving, guys, you will just try to you'll try and carve all the rotten wood out. You'll do your best. Well, I do anyways. Like this, see that right there? That's what you call rotten wood. Okay. That's what that's what's inside of here so when you're carving you think of how you can still make this piece look good with that rod in there well you know there's there's a few ways I thought I can I can make this come in here I can like uh, let me get a pen so I can bring this in here so it goes like that then it comes out like this you know, and cut all this away. And it will make it just look like a better flowing thing, right? Like I gotta figure it out. And then it just adds character. See, I started carving this. So it looks like a couple things of hair go up, but I'm not too sure if I just wanna, if I stopped. Because I don't know if I wanna leave this all open grain. Like this is just going to be open grain guys there's not going to be any detail carving in this it's going to be sanded real nice because this piece is just going to be like uh well there's not going to be any special i might put some details in her hair to defy it like use my hair cutter that i use and uh burn her hair possibly i'm not too sure i don't know so anyways i'm just going to finish my break here and i don't know just don't know
Coffee gone, rot gone. See, just make it all, like I say in lots of my other videos, guys, when I first started painting and stuff like that, I talked to a well-known established uh, tattoo artist about any tip he can give me for art. He goes, just practice your S lines, Jordy. They're so important. S lines, like big, sh small shapes. And I, and I, I listen to artists, guys, you know, like, if you know an uh, established artist or somebody that's you know does really nice art, don't be afraid to um, ask them tips. See how deep I carved in here? I basically got all that rot out. There's a little tiny bit left right there. Now you guys can really see that grain. The grain in this piece is like this, all over the all over the place. So I'm thinking. I'm not sure, but I'm thinking her face just kind of needs, no, that's, I don't know. So what I'm going to do next here, oh boy, there's going to be a lot of sanding on this piece. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. We all love the sound so much, don't we? Um, now I'm going to do is get my cuts all and carve all these hairs in just real thin because, oh yeah, when I was having my break, I, I said, this is just kind of, cause this isn't hair. This is just background absack stuff, right? This is her hair. So I'm thinking she needs to kind of have hair coming up and under here too, to kind of just make this not look so plain. So what about like, uh, something like this? Um, where's a good point to start? Like here. something along that lines or from up here I don't know I'll figure it out so guys I pulled out my um, Merlin 2 love this tool guys look at that aggressive disc on there I'm going to be hooking up my less aggressive disc on here later to clean it up maybe even sand with this too it's a two inch disc guys King Arthur sells this. If you want to head to the King Arthur website, it's not a cheap tool, but it sure saves me a lot of time. Or you can go to my Amazon link below and look at, see how much it costs there. Okay, so uh, yeah, I guess I'll keep on carving. I'm going to do the hairs now. Okay, so I got all the hairs cut in there. I know she's got big hair right here. I realize that. But there's a reason for it, and I'll show you why at the end of the video. Um, now it's like a kind of like an open field, what I can do. I'm thinking that I want to put the little detailed beard, hair, beard hairs, all uh, not beard hairs, but hairs all through here, all throughout the whole thing. Like make, make this is the front of her head, this hair, but make this the back. So it's kind of like, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. I think that would be a neat effect. I'm not too sure what to do with this this tail part here yet. I think I'm just going to make this whole thing hair. You know, and then just her face will stick out. And that's because that's what this carving is about. Really, really just like a um, beautiful piece of wood and just make it a beautiful lady in the wood, I guess. So I don't know, guys. I'll just have to keep carving and um, keep loving the haters. Oh, yeah. Big crybaby there has a beard now. <laughs> Ah, uh, karma for the haters, karma for the haters. Keep carving, Jordan. Okay, so we're on the water here now. See, it's taking shape. I did all those things in there, all those cuts. This is a lot of carving.
Sure is. I had a pile of sawdust in this corner like this high. So now I got this friggin' aluminum cutter. You guys can get uh, packs of 10 of these on my Amazon for like, I don't think they're on my Amazon. I think they're sold out maybe, but they're aluminum cutters. And now I'm going to run around and carve this whole thing everywhere with this detail cutter. Because I figure if I'm going to do up here, I might as well do here too. Because I can hide those cracks, kind of, right? This isn't, I'm not going to sell this carving cheap, people. You know what I mean? Like, if you do a carving like this, if you don't sell it, better off gifting it away. So anyways, more water, more carving. And I'll be back. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Here it comes. Here it comes. What the... F was I thinking? Oh man. I still got a lot of touch ups to do too. I can see lots of little stops and starts, kind of like right here. I'm trying. And now I, I saved the worst part for the last because I got to make them go around around there. So it's the whole pieces done, right? So yeah, that part sucks. Okay, I'm having a break. I'll be back. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so I just got back from my break. I had to go over to Pete's house. Uh, him, and, him and his wife are in um, kind of isolation, just being safe for what everybody should be doing. But I had some flower pots that I posted on a site and some like heavy old cement ones. And she said she wanted them, so I just dropped them off. And he had some things sitting outside there for me. So, let's see. Well, and I went to McDonald's and got another coffee. Okay, so he got me these bars. He left me these bars outside for uh, buffing. Because I got a buffer and I'm going to be, when I do rock carving, I can buff it. So he left me four different grades. Thanks, Pete. Look at all these little things. These castings he made of little wood spirits, guys. There's like... There's like four different shapes. I think he was going to sell them at Christmas time or I'm not too sure. But yeah, they're all uh, resin spirits. Cool buck up. He was just sampling it, doing different castings and stuff like that, trying it out. I like that one. The blue and red in it. So yeah, these can be like keychain hang keychain hangers or whatever. Maybe I'll do a giveaway on some of these one day. Or whatever. Yeah, there's all different sorts. There should be four different styles of faces in here. But anyways. Thanks, Pete. I guess you got sick of having them around. <laughs> and also, guys, look at this. You made this for me, and thank you very much, Pete. This will go with all my other special stuff that you made me. <clears throat> this might be one of the only cottonwood bark rings in the world. Like, this is from a piece of the bark that I gave him. And uh, look how he did that without breaking. This stuff's so fragile. So I won't be wearing this, but I'll be putting it, um, I don't wear rings. When I do, I might wear it. But um, it will be going with my other stuff that you made me, Pete. So thank you. This is, let's see if he signed it. No, nope, didn't sign it. This is a one-off. Pete usually signs his pieces, but this is pretty hard to sign anyways. So thanks, Pete. I love it. I really do. Got a special talent there, man. And his wife gave me some cookies. Thanks, Mrs. Blair. And I came home, and then my neighbors own a deli, uh, like a bake uh, uh, bakery. So look what I got! Look what I found when I got home. Oh yes, my favorite chocolate. These ones are my favorite with the marshmallows in them. <laughs> Life is good. I'm gonna finish this, drink some coffee, and finish carving those bullshit hairs in the top. Okay, so everything's going on point.
What do you guys think so far? I tried to make this kind of look like a wing, right? Like she's an angel. Um, so now I got everything sanded. I did sand the face to 320 grit, okay? So I have this stuff called <clears throat> Minwax Pre-Stain Wood Conditioner, okay? I believe uh, since Pete is the one that gave me the challenge, Pete taught me about this stuff. Um, this stuff is pre-stained wood conditioner. But the stuff that he has, and I don't have any more of it, is called sanding, sanding sealer. So I don't have any of that, but this stuff's, I think it's the same as sanding sealer. So lots of people have been asking questions when they, because this is going to be um, tongue oiled, right? When they oil their piece, some piece are shiny and some piece are dull because there's different uh, whatever, some wood absorbs the stain different than other parts of the wood, right? So I can tell you right here it's going to be darker. So this might be different porous than up here, right? So I'm going to put the, you got to put this stuff on and it says to leave it for two hours. So I'm going to put this stuff on and what this does, let me try and say it right. It's my opinion, guys. What this does it blocks the wood. It's pretend it's just you're putting a pretend you're putting a thin layer of plastic that deep inside the wood. So when you put your oil on it, everything's consistent. The wood can't suck the oil too in too much in some certain spots. You know, these cracks are really gonna pop out when I oil it too, but that's okay. So I'm gonna put this on, and then once the stuff dries, Pete says that you can get a like, real fine sandpaper, and it's a good time to sand all the little hairy pieces off, right? I've already done it, most of it. It's already almost done. So I'm gonna go outside, because I read the, actually, uh, believe me, I actually read the instructions, because I wanted to get it right for you guys. But it says this stuff gives you brain damage. So I got enough brain damage <laughs> for today, and for the rest of my life, I'll take this outside, and apply this stuff outside and then I'll be back once I got the stuff on and you'll see how actually here's true western cedar guys and that's a real light piece it goes dark western red cedar it will go a lot darker than that I'm not going to put that eye in there or the mouth because it already says what it is like I said guys it's kind of abstract right so I'll let this dry off and then I'll go outside and apply the stuff and then I'll be back a couple of late hours later. Okay, so here it is with the sanding sealer on it. Looks like an angel and wings kind of there like that way, doesn't it? So now what I got to do is uh, the sanding sealer is dry. I got to hit it with a light sander. I'll find uh, some, maybe I'll use a little bristle brush or something. No, I'll find something. I'll just sand it and then I'll be back. Okay, so there it is sanded again. I hit this uh, face a little bit more to kind of give it some shading. But I talked to Pete just a few minutes ago and I asked him if I could put oil over the top of the uh, sanding sealer stuff. He says, well, the oil is supposed to soak into the wood. That's the point. So I decided I'm not going to oil it. It's dark enough anyways, but I'm going to put this stuff. I just have this stuff lying around this uh, polyurethane stuff. This is an indoor piece anyways. Ah, uh, yes, oh yes. Look at this steam tuna. Bet you feel like eating sushi now, don't you, if you like sushi? <laughs> okay, here she is. The big reveal. Kind of like the, her lip. Oh man, I'm so full from that sushi. Yeah, so I just carved this in five minutes when I was waiting for that um, that uh, sanding sealer to uh, dry. And um, look, I even signed it. I even made it for somebody. To Pete, aka the mad scientist. If I even spelt it right, I don't know. Did I? <laughs> I'm just joking, Pete. But look at those, look at those hoop things hanging there. She's pregnant, by the way. 
She comes from the same planet as E.T. Yeah, remember e the show E.T.? E.T. go home. She wants to go home to E.T. too. So, uh, anyways, Pete, I know, I know you're, I'm just joking around. I know you were um, in that live chat suggesting to do a lady spirit because it's uh, real challenging to do. And you like to see me challenge myself and all the other people in our great community to challenge themselves. So, um, thanks, Pete. I, I, re I really do appreciate everything that you've done for me. And I'd be nowhere where I am at today with all your uh, guidance and help. And you, and you really do mean a lot to me. You know, not too many people do, but you do. And um, so thanks. So it's just a big, It's just, I'm just kidding around when I'm saying that, that this is for you. But let me get the other piece, guys. But I do like her lips. Eh? She's got a nice mouth. Okay, guys, here's the final piece. You know, I didn't let that sanding sealer uh, sit before I started. I did two coats. I didn't let it sit long enough to um, set, so it wouldn't this it the wouldn't wouldn't absorb, stop absorbing all the stuff that I sprayed on it. But you can see the face is kind of shiny. So what I do now is I just let it. It just goes to show you different porouses in the same wood. So obviously this is harder wood here. You can see it's darker, right? See and see how it's holding the shine, and this is flat because it sucked it in more here, right? So I'm going to let this sit for like a two or three, four good days, even a week. And then I'll apply one more coat and then that should be a good final gloss over it. So, but I'm really happy with the way it turned out. What do you guys think? I'd love to read in the comments and uh, hope everybody's good and uh, being safe and just uh, sticking out at home. This, uh, oh yeah, I got to show you guys why I gave her big hair. So I think she kind of looks like an angel. What do you guys think? This is why she's got big hair. This is my mom in her early days. And for those people that uh, give me shit for swearing and using the, the man's name in vain, well, why do I have this cross? Why do I have this cross hanging with my mom's picture? He told me it's okay to say, God damn it. He knows I'm not using his name in vain. See? But that's why. And my grandpa made this frame. So that's why uh, she's got the big hair. Because my mom had big hair in this picture. Wasn't she a beautiful lady back in her day? Here's an award that she won. For uh, Delta Assist Community Health Care. After she passed away. But I sure miss my mom. I'm sure all of you that don't have your moms. Miss them. I sure miss her. And this piece uh, that I carved today. It's the second of its kind that I carved. And the first one was called Karen's Dream. And I sold that piece for like. A, I don't forget how much. But I got good money for it. But this piece is uh, called Karen's Dream Continued. Thank you.